Now that I'm pretty much done with this RCA 630TS cabinet, I want to try to cram in a couple more refinishing projects before the weather gets too cold. So one, I want to finally finish off this Predict a Holiday cabinet. This is a faux finish, it's flaking up badly as they so often are. I've got some paper thin real mahogany veneer. I want to try putting on perhaps just in some areas like the center, maybe even the whole thing, we'll see. Some areas are real hard wood like here, which I'll just refinish with some toner lacquer. And then this is a photo finish that's in decent enough condition, so I won't be touching that. So it'll just be some selective touch up. These sides are all right. Uh, a little bit of chipping here I might be able to touch up, but really it's just the center area that's bad where it's flaked off so badly. All right, and then the other one is the Sonora 302 that I'd mentioned I think months ago I was going <laughs> to do a quick refinishing job on. Well, now is the time. This will be even easier than the GE A10 I recently re refinished, I think, because like this set, or rather like that cabinet, this cabinet is also just basically a box. This reverse painted glass will come out. I shouldn't have to do any work in here. Bottom is brass, just like the GE set. That'll come out. So all that's left are the three sides and this, which is all the same color. So no masking, no nothing. And I'll use toner to blend it because this is solid wood. This is veneer. You try to stain those, they will not look the same. The veneer will take the stain better than the hardwood. There are a few dings here and there. Oh, this is just flaked off old finish. I think the veneer will be in decent enough shape underneath. You can see how it's pretty miserable. There's really no hope of touching something like this up when the color difference is so dramatic. And uh, here's where the speaker goes. So I'll fill in that little chip of missing veneer. Otherwise, uh, there's one little chip down there that's missing. Fill that in, pull that little chips along the edge. This edge isn't so bad. Front's a little dinged up. Let me try steaming that out. Otherwise it should be pretty easy. So the first thing I want to do is remove the glass, remove the brass, put those safely aside. I might be able to polish the brass up. I'm not sure. Let's see. Are these decals or are these recessed? Oh, they're recessed. Good. So I can clean and polish up this brass really good and then uh, clear coat it with some specialty lacquer for brass, keep it looking good forever. And uh, Or rather before that. So remove this, polish up the brass really nice and then fill these recessed areas in if need be with some type of brown paint and then clear coat the whole thing to keep it from retarnishing. You know, I wasn't quite sure. About you. Very few uh, examples of this online. What I wasn't sure about is, is this hardwood trim in front actually a different color than the sides? It kind of seems like it might be, but it's hard to tell because of the fading. The top and the front look very similar. The top's darker than the sides. So I don't know if the top is dirty or it's from sun fading, I don't know. I'd be inclined to think that this whole thing was the same color. This uh, was an off-brand and uh, yeah, not, not the most elaborate cabinet. Just one reason why I really like this because it's a rather unusual, hard to find model. Well, as I say, first thing I'll take this out. And uh, huh, looks like it was held in by nails, but most of the nails are missing. There's only two left on the left hand side. The two in the middle and the two on the right are just gone. So I guess I just pop these two brads out and this piece should come right out. The glass? I really don't know how that's held in. Uh, you know, it could be that this front is screwed on from the inside. I really hope they didn't do something crazy like install the piece of glass and then glue or nail on the front and the glass just isn't going to come out not without some surgery 
Well, I think that glass may be <laughs> kind of uh, nailed in. Huh. <laughs> well, it looks like maybe I can pop off these three nails and this aluminum back piece will come off. And maybe that will reveal some way to get the glass out, but geez. It looks like this was all put together, then these side pieces were glued on, and it was nailed in place, and it's not meant to be taken apart or serviced. All I had to do was remove those two brads on the left side, and this whole front piece came right off. It appears to be solid brass, so it should clean up real nice. Now, as for that glass, I've got some good news. Those two pieces of wood that were on the inside were not glued, they were just held in with a couple brads. Pop those out, which freed up the bezel, which I think is aluminum. And uh, the paint's not in the greatest shape. I don't know if they did a bad job painting it originally or it's deteriorated somehow. But uh, it's certainly worn away in spots, so maybe a new coat of off white paint would be in order. And now. With that out of the way, the glass is loose. So it's pretty heavy, so I want to tip the glass, tip the cabinet back rather, and get the glass out. It uh, appears to be uh, laminated glass, which so is two plates of glass with a sheet of plastic in between. So if the gra glass breaks, it doesn't go flying, which makes it a bit thick and heavy. So once that's out of the way, I want to do some cabinet work before I move on to stripping. There's a piece of bracing that should be on this side that's missing. Luckily, it's identical to modern three-quarter inch stock, so I just went over to my local home improvement, improvement center and picked some up. Just got to cut it to length, and then I can install it, which should fix the really bad bow that's in there now. I'll uh, have to do something, clamp it or do something, because the side's got to get pushed out and made straight again. So when I install this and glue it down, it straightens it. It's a... Uh, it, uh, glues up straight. And the top's got a bit of a bow too, but I'm not positive there was ever any bracing across here. I'll have to check. See if there were any screw holes. I mean, it's obvious here. You can see the glue and you can see the holes up here. Well, maybe. I don't know if these are just stains or... Because yeah, there's no evidence of glue here, so I don't think there was any. Anyway, as a, as a result of not, not being bracing, the top is bowed down a little bit. It's not terrible, but there's definitely a gap there, so I might install something across the top as well, but I have to make sure that if I do, that the chassis and CRT will still slide inside the cabinet. The CRT sits on top of the chassis and it's mounted to it, and it comes up pretty close to the top of the cabinet, so that might be where they left it off um, back when they made this. Also, notice that a lot of the glue blocks are loose, like down in the front. I think just about all of them have broken loose from the front of the cabinet. So, I can push this out and let the flux. And it looks like the ones on the side. And you can see there's a glue block. Oh, I guess I left one glue block out because of the speaker. I can say there's one missing, but clearly. Uh, if it was a mirror image of this side, it would have been right about here. And uh, I don't know why they didn't put one up here. Maybe they figured with this strip of wood up here, they didn't need a glue block in this area. I don't know. I think I might put one in just to give this thing a little more strength. Alright, so once I get this all glued up and braced and, and square, then I will see about doing patches. Make sure that there is no veneer separation around the edges. Patch up any chips around the sides, and then I will move on to stripping it. I double checked with the chassis, and it's like I feared when you slide the chassis in flush on the bottom of the cabinet, there's virtually no clearance up top, so I cannot put in a piece of three quarter inch uh, across the top. Or maybe, maybe I could twist the chassis in and angle it and 
get the CRT under as the bottom of the chassis sweeps in, but that would be kind of tough, I think. It's just really very little clearance. Another issue is that uh, I just temporarily put a piece of timber exactly the same length as that in here to, to try to push the top out, but instead what happens is the bottom bows out this way because there's so little wood here because there's a cutout for ventilation or service access grid down there, so that's not a very good idea. So if I really want to straighten this out, I think what I have to do is put something very sturdy and flat on this side and clamp this up to the top against it. Ah, uh, so, I, I don't know, I might just leave it the way it is and just, just say, hey, it's old and that's the way they made it and it sagged and you know, that's that. Uh, at any rate, though, I can certainly fix up this side. So, this fits in here nice and snug, but as you can see, a big gap uh, on either end because of the bowing. So, I can see on this side they just tacked in a few nails to hold it in place, probably with a glue set up. I think I'll uh, use some wood screws on this side uh, and wood glue and I'm going to try to clamp this up. Um, I think I'll, maybe I'll get a 2 by 4 something really strong and sturdy to put on the outside and then make a sandwich and clamp this up tight on both sides because just clamping this up on its own I don't think this, uh, is, this is popular, I don't think it's quite strong enough to uh, straighten this all out on its own. I dug up some screws that are just the right length to go through this three-quarter inch bit of stock and part way into the plywood sides but not so far as there's any chance they'll poke through. And then I drilled four holes in this with a bit of a, a recess for the tops of the screws and I'm going to get ready to uh, glue this up. I also scraped off the remains of the old glue on the side here so I think I'm all ready to attach this. I notice the other side is recessed a little bit so I'll do the same on this side and it's pretty clear there was some kind of back on this. I can see holes down the lengths of both sides so eventually maybe I'll just take some uh, Masonite, drill a whole bunch of holes in it or something and uh, make a back or maybe even get some uh, just perforated metal like this. I let the glue set up overnight and the side is nice and stabilized now and it's flat but I realized later it's of somewhat uh, questionable value because as I slid this down I realized the entire side is warped all the way down to the front of the cabinet, so... Oh well, unless I was going to put some bracing straight across the cabinet inside, which of course I can't because of the picture tube. You know, it's still a bit cupped in. Oh well. Now as for the top, I was thinking that uh, even though I can't put a big hunk of wood across here because uh, the CRT won't slide in, I could at least put some pretty good uh, triangles in there because the CRT you know, circular, so I could uh, put some big wedges in here, so uh, later on tonight I think I'll run over to Home Depot and see what they have. Yeah, you know, I've been surprised, I've searched a few times to find places that sell glue blocks pre-cut. Or sometimes I think they're called angle blocks. I can't find anybody that sells these, so I've always had to make my own and I wonder, is that what everybody does? Did they take like square stock and cut it down the middle and <laughs> cross cut it to make their own glue blocks? I figured I could buy like a big old bag of a hundred of them from some place, but I can't find anybody that sells them. Uh, so anyways, I figured I'd go over to Home Depot and see what they have uh, in terms of um, some wood that maybe I could cut up. Like maybe, uh, same deal, three quarters thick, but maybe like two inches wide and then I can cut it off. It's some angles or something to fit in here. All right, well, while I ponder that, I'm going to start patching the sides. Oh, and I also couldn't resist stripping off part of the top because I wanted to see what the wood was really like underneath. And uh, yeah, clearly it's mahogany in, uh, I don't know, three inch wide strips. So we got one strip, two, three, four, five across the top. 
and various discolorations. I think these might be nail holes that were filled in, so again, crude construction. Um, looks like they may have just cut, put nails in. I can tell this was done at a 45 degree angle and they put a little piece of metal like staple in here to hold it together, but I think they might have driven nails down from the top and then put in wood filler over the nail heads. Again, not the classiest construction technique. I don't know why you'd really need nails since they got glue blocks on the inside, but whatever. Whatever. So, figuring when it's done, you know, it'll look something like this, fill in the grain, use uh, probably some brown mahogany toner lacquer, it'll kind of look like this, but the grain will be a little more visible and obviously it'll be a uniform look. Alright, so now I'm going to go around the cabinet and fix in all of these. I've got some old mahogany veneer I salvaged from cabinets that I scrapped out in sets that weren't worth saving. So I like got a chisel under here and I've popped off uh, sheets of veneer or scraps of it that are pretty much the same grain, same thickness. So I'll just cut up little pieces and patch them in here and over here. Those are the two most visible that I know of. And then along the bottom you get the usual little chip outs down there, but I'm not going to go too overboard patching this up because, you know, it is what it is. What's that expression? Making a silks purse out of a sow's ear. I mean, this was a cheaply made cabinet, so why, uh, why go overboard trying to uh, fix up every imperfection? Just got back from the hardware store with some supplies. One thing I got was a uh, 1x2 oak figure, put that across the top and I'll cut out as little as possible so that the CRT will fit through there. Clamp glue it up as before. In fact I might uh, clamp and glue it just like this, well obviously cut it to length and uh, then see uh, about trimming it out for the CRT after the fact because if I cut out a section of it here, it'll be thin and weak and when I clamp it uh, probably won't be as effective. Plus, so the more I think about it, CRT, well they're shaped like that. If I angle in the set as I put it in, I think I could get under this. I don't know. Worst case, I'll have to get a little coping saw or jigsaw and cut some away. And I also, I was talking about glue blocks before and wondering what people use for them. Well here's my solution. Just bought an eight foot long piece of oak quarter round um, trim. I'll just cut this up into as many little pieces as I need for glue blocks. Don't know that I'll need any for this necessarily, maybe one or two, but I've got an upcoming project where I think I'm going to need a whole bunch of these. So that will be fun to cut up. Also got a great deal on these. Micro, microfiber cloths. I love these for when I'm doing sanding. They were great to pick up all the dust. And uh, well, I got an 18 pack for I think five bucks or less. Good for dusting in general too. I think these work much better than Swiffers to uh, pick up dust. And then you can just wash them out and all the dust falls off and you can reuse them. Let's see. Also, Surprisingly difficult to find a big old 250 watt light bulb, or 300 watt rather. So not only would this be great for dim bulb testing, but uh, I want to use this up in the attic. We used to have a 250 watt bulb up there, just a single bulb right in the middle of the attic and it burned out. And the only thing I had in the was a 150 and it's not quite, gonna, it's not quite as good. Uh, I figure 300 will be uh, fantastic. Let's see how long that lasts. And finally, lacquer thinner because that was just about out. I noticed that they also have a brand of green environmentally friendly lacquer thinner that has virtually no petroleum distillates in it. But I heard some bad things about that, so I went with the good old traditional stuff. Alright, so <laughs> I think I've got everything that I could need on hand to finish bracing this up and strip it down and start refinishing it and I'll even be able to see what I do when I work up in the attic because I'm going to probably be doing most of this in the evening and now that uh, days are getting much shorter the sun uh, is pretty much down by the time I get done with work so that is definitely 
a must have. I brought this cabinet up to the attic where I've got the chassis and did a dry run and there's just no way. There's no way you can twist it or angle it to get the chassis in with this much wood added. Maybe a half inch or three eighths of an inch, but certainly not this much. So I already know I'm going to have to cut some away. So I may just cut that beforehand, um, or at least uh, part way. But uh, something uh, also occurred to me in hindsight that if I'm going to do this, it really wouldn't be as structurally sound if I did it like this and cut it off here versus cutting these vertical pieces off short and having this go the full distance. So what I'm going to do is mark these and carefully cut them back and knock them out. I don't imagine it won't be too tough, probably especially not on this one. Imagine the old glue isn't the holding as well as the new stuff will, but even so, with a chisel, I should be able to knock that out without too much trouble. And then I'll uh, install this the full length, and uh, I'll figure out where exactly I need to cut it. With the help of this mini hacksaw, hammer, chisel, I was able to make quick work of these vertical supports. Cut down that piece of oak and it fits in there nice and tight. Straight and level across the top now. This thing is much stronger and I really wish I could just leave it like this. But as I say, I gotta cut a bit out of here. Uh, don't know if I have any coping saw blades left. Uh, actually, I think I might have broken my coping saw altogether. <laughs> Plus, this is a pretty thick piece of oak, so it would be tough to cut that way anyways. Uh, the easiest thing to do would be to just cut it off at some angles and just leave a section where there's no piece of wood left at all. Or I could try using a jigsaw. Um, haven't used it before, though. And uh, I don't really have a, I'm not sure how I would clamp this down so I could cut that suction out easily, but I'll, I'll come up with something. I'll come up with something, but for sure, this is a much, much stronger configuration than the way it was before. I've been working on patching up the veneer and I'm almost done, but I just noticed something that's a little puzzling. The top is absolutely mahogany with strips no question the sides however I'm not so sure I did put some mahogany patches in like here and up in the corner and uh, down at the bottom well, now I'm working on the other side and I realized something the grain doesn't look the same so mahogany typically has uh, speckles throughout it you can see it here too when you use dark grain filler, they really stand out. However, check out the sides. I just took a razor blade and scraped some of the finish off. You don't see all those little flux. It's a much um, tighter grain, or straight grained, I guess you could say. Now maybe they didn't use a dark grain filler, or it's a different kind of wood, or maybe it came from a different cut of mahogany. I don't know, but for all I know, this could be walnut or who knows what. Uh, so, uh, hopefully my patches won't stand out too much, but again, this is a cheapo cabinet. So the bottom of this side is pretty chewed up, but so be it. There's no way I can patch all that in, and wood filler would just stand out even more I think so it wouldn't have the grain lines so I mean, if I was really gonna do this right or really wanted to make this look fancy I could strip off the entire side and put new mahogany veneer on it but again I'm just gonna go with the flow so I'm just gonna strip this and, uh, <laughs> and that's that now in terms of stripping it I started to use chemicals like on the top but well, I took a razor blade to the side and man this stuff comes off easy so <laughs> Sorry for the horrible noise, but I wanted you to see how easy this finish comes off. So I'm definitely going to scrape this side and probably the other side 
and I've actually got a more uh, uh, a better scraper than this too, a tool is actually made for it, which I'll pull out right now. Here's a scraper I bought at the hardware store. It's a little bit easier to use than just freehanding it with a one-sided razor blade. So, yeah. Definitely easier and faster and no solvent odors to deal with. So I'll get as much off as I can with this and then I can either sand this or use a stripper on whatever remains. So, what kind of wood is this really? I, I don't know which species all that well to say for sure. It could very well be mahogany. Here's another sample of just raw mahogany. So, the color sure looks right. It's just the grain doesn't quite look right, but you know, trees aren't all the same, and I suppose it could have come from a different section of, of log, maybe closer to the bark or something like that. And maybe it's just a cheap, undesirable uh, section of mahogany they used. I don't know. I was able to scrape all the finish off the other side of the cabinet quite easily, but when it came to this side, not so much, so I am going to switch to this stripper and some coarse steel wool. This finish melts off really easily, so it'll be down to bare wood quite soon. And this veneer again appears to be somewhat different than the top and different from the other side as well. So we may be looking at three different types of veneer on this cabinet. <laughs> I finished stripping the cabinet, and as I determined, the top is definitely mahogany, and so is this side, and fairly similar. The top is a bit darker, but I think it might be from stains, but the grain is similar, although this does not appear to be cut into the same four inch wide strips as the top. Seems a little odd. Either that or it is in strips, but the grain is a really good match, so it's hard to see the seams. But as for this side, I don't know what's up. I mean, it's, it's quite a bit different. Again, I'm not saying it's not mahogany, but boy, it's a really, really different looking grain. And the front is definitely mahogany, solid mahogany. You can see it has that same type of grain, with the little speckles in it. So, definitely be using toner lacquer, it's one of the nice advantages of it is that it doesn't matter if you have mismatched wood because the color is in the finish and it blends together really well. If I was to use stain on this, uh, the side and the, and the top would definitely not match too well. I figured before I go any further with putting any finish on this cabinet, I better take care of this back support because I knew I was going to cut a suction out. So, brought it up to the attic, lined it up with the chassis, and took a marker and traced out around the top of the CRT, and then fired up my jigsaw and cut around it, and it actually worked out better than I expected. So, got a nice cut out there. I will do one test fit to make sure it really does fit, and then. Assuming it fits, I want to try steaming out a few dings, especially around the front. So that's why I've got a little bowl out of some water here and a Q-tip, and I'll get out an iron and try ste steaming out some of these dings. And then finally, I will start putting on some new finish. Now you may have noticed I didn't bother doing anything down here. Well, that is where the brass plate goes over. I don't see any reason to expend any effort to strip this down and refinish it. It's just going to be covered up anyways. Uh, however, I guess I do still need to strip out a little bit more around in here, so uh, I'll take care of that as well. It turned out that this cut was perfect, but there's a little bit of metal sticking out in the chassis, so I cut a little notch over here. Now it fits in perfectly, so I will proceed with steaming out those dents.
There's one last thing I wanted to deal with before I put on the sanding sealer. This top was rather discolored, especially in this area. So I put some bleach on it, just straight, plain old generic bleach out of the bottle. And I did about three applications of it, uh, fairly light. They dried in maybe five, ten minutes or so. And now I just neutralized it with some generic distilled white vinegar. And then I'll uh, wipe it down with just some clean water and let this dry off good. And then I'll start putting on some new finish and uh, grain filler. It's not 100% perfect, but boy, it's a lot better than it was. Still kind of dark in this area. Some chipped out veneer. Uh, I guess I could try patching that in a little bit. And this is where there appear to be some nail holes with some filler, so I don't know what exactly happened in this area, but that seems to be the worst spot in the cabinet. And now for the fun part, applying the grain filler. Using Constantine's red mahogany paste wood filler. Just using it straight out of the can after I mixed it up really well. I'm using a credit card at various angles to make sure I work it in good to all the voids. Probably end up doing two passes with this.